concrete, we've got you covered. Ropaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. Well, happy Friday, Boise State fans. Welcome on into Bronco Nation News Live here at BroncoNationNews.com. As always, on Tuesdays and Fridays, we are a pleasure to have as our guest, Jay Tuss, sports director over at KTVB. And uh, we're talking NFL draft today. Cyrus Habibi Likio, the former Boise State running back, is going to join us here in a couple minutes and talk about his chances. But, uh, Jay, obviously, uh, to start with, at least tonight for rounds two and three, man, all eyes are going to be on uh, Khalil Shakir, but uh, first of all, good morning, man. How's it going? Yeah, well, good Friday, you know. Um, flip-flop season's been delayed for me one too many times by Boise weather, but but I hope we're getting there soon enough, you know, BJ. So, I don't think there's such a thing, Jay. I've seen you in, like, December out there rocking the flip-flops. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going gonna, gonna to wait this out, but I think, you know, blue skies, sun is out. I think we're going to have some rain tomorrow or something, but for the most part, I, I think we're getting close to flip-flop season. Well, uh, maybe we'll see those down there when we get interview Leon Rice at 1150 today. We're going to talk to Coach Rice about the uh, addition of the Texas Tech transfer, Chibuzo Agbo. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, and so uh, we'll, we'll talk some basketball later and, and get that show. You know, I'm sure you'll have that sound on KTVB tonight. But uh, today we're talking football. And as I said, Khalil Shakir, man, uh, you know, don't think anybody expected him to go last night, obviously, but uh, the, the round kind of two, three, four range is where folks were expecting him to go. Yeah. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be nervous times tonight. I think we're hopefully comes off the board in the second or third round. But as Mike Prater was saying yesterday, Boise State, it doesn't always have that kind of luck where guys go where they should or where we think they would. So you want to hope he goes off tonight, though, because there's a big difference having to sleep on it another night going into round four tomorrow. So uh, what, what do you think, Khalil Shakir, tonight, man? Yeah, I know, that's a good point. That that would be a, a long night if he probably doesn't go. I would say he, he would probably wake up and assume that he goes pretty early uh, tomorrow if he does have to wait that long. But I would be a little surprised. I mean, you know, I don't know, BJ, I don't know if I'm just getting old, more cantankerous or whatever. I honestly have had a little bit of a tough time buying into all the pre-draft um, hype this year. Not necessarily on the player side, but but maybe some of the stuff that, you know, uh, is, is discussed at nauseum. And, I mean, I, I just go back to the NFL Combine when you had all these national reporters saying, hey, they found a sleeper, a diamond in the rough, and Khalil Shakir. And diamonds in the rough, sleeper picks, don't have 2,000 yards, you know, in – uh, what was it, 19 games, you know, to, to wrap up their college career. So that, that's not a sleeper. That just means that you weren't paying attention to him. Um, we all know what Khalil Shakir is capable of, very versatile in an offense. Um, on that note, I, I, I have no clue who picks him. No, no, none of us do, if, if we're being honest. That being said, the Jaguars and the Pats, as, as you and I both know, showed a lot of interest in Khalil at his pro day. So as those picks come around, each team has two picks in round three. New England also has one in round two. As those picks kind of come by, come, you know, go by, you might draw into your TV screens, you know, just a little bit more until you see what happens. Yeah, you don't send your uh, wide receivers coach or multiple, you know, members of your uh, staff all the way to Boise, Idaho from Florida or uh, New England if you're not somewhat interested in him. Perry says, according to ESPN, Shakir is the 10th best wide receiver still available. Uh, Rudy says all it takes is one team to fall in love with Khalil would be surprised if his name is not called tonight. But uh, Rudy, with the comment of the morning here, says strong hair gel game, Tust. I didn't go hat today. I was trying to uh, trying to dress to impress Rudy. You know, we got we got a busy day coming ahead of us. So, um, yeah, the the hours fly by early or fly by swiftly early in the mornings in the Tust household. 
I'm sure you know the same drill, BJ. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We uh, I always love when it's possible when you roll over and you see a seven in front of the clock, but it's usually a six in my house, and so we <laughs> go from there. But uh, really, really excited, and uh, I, I quickly want to give a quick shout out to a couple of our great sponsors here: Transportation Compliance Service. Check them out online, transcomservice.com. Uh, if you're looking to get into the trucking industry, it's a great thing. A thousand people a day are doing it, and uh, they can help you all the, the things you need to do with all the different uh, you know forms and things. So check them out, Transcom Service. Dot com united commercial insurance.com 44 states around the country they can write policies for you for your business insurance but they're based right here in the treasure valley so check them out united commercial insurance.com and uh, of course boise dentistry co as well boise dentistry co.com that's dr minard on the screen there with my kids uh they're smiling which is a rarity so go check them out full family dentistry they got locations across the treasure valley if you're looking for a new dentist you can check them out at boise dentistry co Dot com. Jay, we uh, teased we were going to have a special guest on the show today. And, uh, you know, Cyrus Abibi Likio is a guy that uh, we kind of wish we could have had a chance to, to get to know more than one year, man. He was an impressive player on the field, obviously uh, did some great things uh, at Boise State. And, and we're uh, we're excited to bring him on to the show here, man. Uh, Cyrus, uh, welcome to Bronco Nation News here in Boise, man. Uh, happy draft weekend. How's it going? I'm doing well. I appreciate you guys having me. I'm excited for this weekend and just kind of waiting patiently. What's uh, what was it like? I don't know if you can turn your phone sideways. By the way, it might help a little bit with the the screen here. But uh, what's uh, what was it? If you can, it's not a big deal. What's uh, last night watching that first round of the draft? Uh, don't worry about it, man. It's cool. Uh, last, yeah, I got it. There we go. Right, perfect. That? Perfect. Ah, uh, perfect. What was last night like for you? You know, just kind of watching the first round and and uh, knowing that you know it could be a big weekend for you, hopefully. And and just uh, what were the emotions like as the drafts now officially underway? Uh, it was it was dope. It was cool. You know, um, I trained with a lot of the guys that um you know that got picked up, and you know, obviously played with Kayvon. Um, you know, it, it kind of felt like any other draft, just kind of watching it, and uh, you know, super dope to see those those guys and their families, all their lives have changed. Just you know off that one night but um it's just a little bit different this year just knowing that you know there's a you know that i'm in that same draft class um so um at the same time watching it it's kind of just like you know it, it's motivation at the same time too and and um i can only hope and pray that you know i get to hopefully you know play with uh, some of the one of one of those guys or some of those guys so um yeah but it's awesome it's dope um, it's it's really exciting um and yeah like i said i'm just waiting patiently I was gonna say, man, your your name's in the same pot now, man. You're you're eligible to hear your name at, at any point. Uh, and so, what's uh, yeah? Get the pillow out of there, man. Come on, no. Uh, what what uh, what's uh? It's got to be a cool feeling though, knowing your name is in that pot. And I know you certainly weren't ex- gonna hear your name last night, but whether it's you know tomorrow at some point or you get the call, I mean, it's it's. You said you've watched the draft before, but it's got to be a different feeling, man. I don't know if you're checking off teams as they draft running backs, which didn't happen last night. No running backs went in the first round. Uh, what, what are what, what what is that feeling like knowing this? It's actually real for you this year. Yeah, I mean it's it's super real for me, but at the same time, it feels kind of unreal. If that makes sense, um, you know, it, I've been playing football since I was seven, eight years old, right? And this is kind of just like the thing I've always been dreaming about, and and to finally realize and, and experience that hey it's it's finally here um like i said it's an unreal feeling but um seriously like i said i'm just waiting patiently and you know if it's if it's today tomorrow um you know getting signed whatever it is uh, you know i'm super thankful for any opportunity um i just you know i, I know it's kind of cliche to say you know all i need is one shot and just a chance but you know i i firmly i firmly believe in that and i think you know i'll be able to you know, help teams out with, with special teams or, or being a role player, whatever I need to do. Um, I'm not selfish. I don't, you know, expect myself to just come in and be some NFL superstar. I know I've always been kind of an underrated underdog player, and I take pride in that. You know, Cyrus, you mentioned you, know, you played with, with Kayvon Thibodeau at, at Oregon. Uh, same goes for Justin Herbert, Khalil Shakir. I mean, you, you played with some, some great dudes that are either in the NFL or will soon be heading into the NFL. Was like a guy that you kind of leaned on for for a little bit of advice, or whether it be to, to help calm the nerves, or, or maybe prep you for something in the pre draft process. Yeah, um, you know, like like you mentioned, I played with a lot of greats. Um, one guy who really um, helped me out, especially my redshirt freshman year, is Royce Freeman. Um, he plays for the Texans right now. Um, you know, I, I you know in high, when I was in high school, right, he was tearing up the Pac-12, and and Oregon was always my dream school, so. 
um, you know, to be able to just come in as a, you know, 17 year old kid and, you know, even something as simple as him. I remember he asked me, hey, you want to go catch a movie or or, you know, do some extra drills. Something like that is just huge to me. Um, and ever since then, he's kind of just played um, a type of like big brother role, if that makes sense. And um, he's messaged me and, you know, he's like, hey, man, you know, be patient and, and um, you know, your time will come. Um, and to hear that from somebody who, you know, got picked up early is, is awesome. Um, another person as well, Javon Holland. Um, he plays for uh, the Dolphins right now. Um, he's actually a year younger than me, but we, we grew up together like throughout high school and things like that. So um, just somebody that, you know, I, I kind of grew up with and from the same area um, just to see, you know, what he's doing in the league. And, um, you know, he's, he's a, a really good player. But to see like, hey, man, I've, I've played with this guy and I can somewhat hang, you know, is, is kind of a confidence booster. And he's, uh, you know, he's just messaged me and telling me, you know, Hey, man, you know, wherever you go, just make the most of it. So kind of the same advice from both guys, but um, it's really nice to hear. You know, we, we know you're a, you're a humble guy, but at the same time, like over the last four months, you've had to sell yourself. I mean, that, that's the point of this. You're probably one of the more polished interview um, interviewers that we've, we've had or interviewees that we've had at Boise State, in all honesty. You give us great you. stuff. You're engaging. You're funny. Um, how much has maybe helped you throughout this process is, as you talk with NFL teams and scouts. Sorry, you broke up. Could you repeat the, that last question? No, it's just how, how you, you're, you're, you're so comfortable, you're so engaging um, in your communication, your discussion with people. How much do you think that helps you or has helped you throughout this process? I just wanted you to say it again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I didn't hear it. No, I didn't hear it the first time. For real, though. <laughs> no, but, uh, man, no, it's – it's. I mean, I just feel like – for me, I, I grew up in such a diverse area, if that makes sense, in the Bay Area. And um, I come from, you know, my mom and dad's size are a complete different lifestyle. So I've been able to just grow up and, and, and get along with anybody, if that makes sense. It doesn't matter where you're from or, you know, who you are, how tall you are, the color of your skin, you know, what religion you are. It doesn't matter. It's just I kind of see everybody the same. And, and um, it's truly been a blessing. It kind of helped me just engage with um, even like, like mentioning NFL scouts and things like that. But um, you know, I've just been selling that I'm kind of like a, I'm a diverse guy, if that makes sense. Um, I can play it anyway at Oregon. Shoot, I was 225. There's some teams calling me saying, hey, you want to play some fullback? I'm, you know, hey, I'll play fullback and put on, you know, another 10 pounds. Um, you know, I played at around 205 to around two, 210 at Boise State. And right now I'm weighing at like 222. So it's just like it's something I can do. You know, if you want me to drop down, I drop down. Um, I've played at any weight and I feel comfortable at any weight. And I've just kind of showed them that, hey, I'm. Um, I, I diverse back. I think you were the one that told me that I caught twice as many or some, I think it was you, uh, yeah. Jay or, but, um, you know, I caught twice as many, um, you know, balls out the backfield, um, and then my whole career at Oregon, yeah. you know, at Boise state. So, um, just selling things and, and, you know, just being who I am and, and showing these guys, you know, yeah, I'm a diverse football player, but at the same time, you know, I'm going to stay out of trouble. Um, you know, I'm going to engage with these guys and, and I'm really big on, you know, bonding in the locker room and, and building a family. I know it's a business, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a game. We all started playing on the street, and, and that's how I kind of want to treat it at the same time. You need it, BJ. <laughs> it happens once a show, so there you go. It's, it's good to get it out of the way now. Yeah, you had uh, nine catches your sophomore year, five your junior year, and then 23 that senior year uh, at Boise State. What did coming to Boise State do for you? I know you came, obviously, with uh, for a reason, wanting to prove, you know, you were more of a all-around back, kind of help your chances at the league and all that. Do you think, uh, you know, you may, you coming to Boise State helped and, and put you in a better position here as you try to live out that dream? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, like you mentioned with the with the catches and, and even just being able to run around, um, you know, outside of the 20-yard line. Um, it's pretty dope. It's awesome. It was awesome to showcase and, um, I think I hit some good speeds as far as like my GPS. I know NFL scouts have access to that, but I've showed some good speeds on miles per hour and things like that. And um, it was a great move. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it was super awesome. It was, a, it was a great experience. I love Boise. You know, I'm forever thankful. Um, and just to be able to come in, it's kind of weird. I only came for about six months, five to six months, right? And, um, you know, I, I played four years at Oregon, and, and obviously Boise and Oregon aren't the best of buddies but um you know I, I came in and and you know guys still kind of brought me in and and you know I didn't feel like I was you know like excluded or anything you know everyone just kind of brought me in and 
uh, was super nice to me and, and treated me just like everybody else. And I'm super thankful for that. But honestly, I really feel like it, it not only just helped me showcase, you know, some different skills out on the field, but um, it kind of got me ready for a quick change, you know, and I know that's going to happen in the league and, and being able to be comfortable in a new environment, um, you know, Boise and Oregon are obviously um, pretty different. So it was just like, it was, it was awesome to experience that. So I think mentally too, it got me really ready for what, what could potentially happen. Jay, we got two quick fan questions on YouTube here, and then I'll throw it back to you. Uh, Cyrus uh, Perry wants to know, do you, any pro teams giving you encouragement? You might get picked or signed. Who are a couple teams maybe that uh, you feel like might be options for you that fans should be uh, hoping don't take running backs? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot, I mean, obviously, to the Niners. I'm a Bay Area guy. Um, I think they take pride in getting a lot of guys from back home. Um, the Niners, uh, Raiders, Cowboys, and Panthers have kind of been – the main teams and a little bit of the chargers hopefully justin's pushing for me but uh you know <laughs> but those are kind of some of the teams um more west coast besides the you know the, the panthers um but yeah you know I'm, I'm excited to go anywhere i'll go play in the cold in green bay or i'll go sunbathe in miami I don't, you know i'm with whatever you know i just i'm just excited that you know i potentially get to play football and i'm at the highest stage Derek wants to know on the YouTube channel here, what's your favorite memory from uh, your year in Boise and at Boise State? Who, man, so many. I would walking say dude, um, walking that dude into the turf in Logan. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, that, that was that was pretty dope. No, man, my favorite memory. Honestly, it's not even really about me. It's um, Fresno State. Um, when those guys are fighting in the stand, now, nah, um, now nah, Fresno State uh, <laughs> was uh, George Holani. Um, we actually found out we're related through blood, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyways, um, I don't think a lot of people knew that. Um, he caught a screen pass. I think you guys remember it was a touchdown, but it was called back. Um, and I know he's been injured and kind of dealing with a lot of things. So um, to be able to see him run full speed and kind of run down the field for me, just being on the sideline and, and seeing that. Um, for some reason that just sticks out to me the most just because I know he came off that knee injury and then he was dealing with some hamstring stuff and uh, to be able to run and be free and, uh, and just seeing his, you know, his smile off the sideline is just kind of, for me, just my favorite memory. Um, that's my brother right there. And, and uh, to be able to just jump around and celebrate with him and my family was kind of first row, our families. And just seeing that was kind of just like a surreal moment for me. So that I would say for me, um, that was my favorite memory and obviously beating BYU. So. <laughs> you scored in that game too by the way that would have been a good memory um cyrus every time this time every year i'm always reminded like how tough it is to get one of these roster spots in the nfl like you're you were one percent you know the top one percent coming out of high school to get to college and now the top one percent out of college are actually going to get a shot in the nfl i mean that that's crazy so you have to check all the boxes whether that be ability or character as we cling to character for a moment, you sent out this tweet the other day that said, 23 years all of my life without a shot or drink of alcohol or a puff of weed. Life isn't boring without it. If, any, uh, if anyone is having trouble quitting or wants to quit, my DMs are open. Let's talk. God bless. Um, I want to start off with, you know, once upon a time, I was, a, I was an okay baseball player, not nearly as good as you are at football, but I was chasing my dreams as well. And when I played baseball, I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't drink, I didn't do anything. So how much, I mean, how much do you sacrifice in order to chase the, the game that you love? Uh, for me personally, um, I don't really see it much as a, you know, when it comes to the party and things like that. Um, it's just never been really something that, um, for me, that I admire, if that makes sense. It's not tempting. It's not a temptation to me. It's not something I really want to do. So for me, it's never really been a sacrifice. Um, obviously, there's been experiences and things with family and, and things like that that I won't really go into, but that kind of play into that role um, of not wanting to pick up any of that. And for me, um, shoot, man, I've always just been a guy who just can have fun without it. And I've always felt like um, at the same time with football, too, I just felt like, you know, it was kind of something that would poison my body and put me at a disadvantage. Um, you know, I'm not the freakiest athlete, but I know I work the hardest and I think, hey, I got to have little edges like that. Um, and, you know, to be able to keep up with a lot of these, you know, amazing players. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, it was cool. You know, I just, I don't know what made me 
do that. I didn't really want to be like a guy like kind of showing off, like, hey, you know, you know, this and that. But I, I feel like, you know, God's given me a platform to, you know, with football to kind of do things like this and, and shoot my DMs flooded. I didn't, I didn't really expect it to. I was just like, you know, maybe a few people and a lot of people were just hitting me up. It, it was even high schoolers, people in college, grown men, grown women. So um, it was awesome just to be able to see everyone's different, you know, walks of life and, and just give them advice. And, um, you know, a lot of people, when they want to quit, they just want to quit right away. But I was telling a lot of people, like, hey, you know, if you have, if you're having five drinks a night, you know, maybe cut down to three, you know, it's, it's not, not everyone can just be cutthroat and cut it off right away. So, um, but just to be able to give a little advice like that, um, from my personal experience, this was awesome, but, but yeah, I'm kind of glad, you know, and that my DMs are still open if anyone needs to talk. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because you said that and you said that people have reached out and you don't have to, you know, we don't have to get too personal here because maybe those are personal conversations. But um, what, what do you get out of that? I know that that's kind of a, a weird way to phrase that question because you're offering something to people. But um, what, 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 what might you get out of that? How does that uh, maybe maybe shape you and how you approach things? Yeah, personally, uh, for me, you know, I'm a big man of my faith um, and my savior. So I just feel like um, you know, my whole reasoning at, for, for, at first, well, obviously, obviously for football was, you know, I want to play in the big leagues and make as much money as I can and, and you know, provide for my family. But then I kind of started to realize, you know, um, with the amount of work I put in, I, I feel like, you know, that that'll come um, in some way, shape or form. You know, if it's if it's football, if, if I'm bagging groceries, I'll be the best bag, you know, <laughs> bagger in the world, you know, and just work, and work hard at that. But um, I kind of just realized, like, you know, um, this platform and stage that God's given me, I just feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of people I've realized, you know, traveling around the world, you know, going meeting different fans and things like this and all these different peoples, going to two different universities. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different types of people with certain troubles and, you know, they don't like to voice it and things like that. But um, I feel like, you know, with the platform that I have, it, it is kind of cool. I, I would it would be dope if I was in high school and, you know, somebody going into the league or a running back at a big time university was like, yo, man, let's, let's chop it up about some of your problems. I'd be like, hey, you know, this is a guy I look up to. Why not? You know, you know, and, you know, it's kind of cool. You know, some people, you know, like they like to open up to their families. They like to open up to friends. And um, I just feel like, you know, I'm just another, um, what do you say, like another route, you know, just another person to talk to. So, uh, but for me, it just, um, you know, it just makes me feel good, you know. Um, as a person, um, and I love learning about people. Um, after football, I want to be a sports agent, so I'm big on relationships and and creating bonds. Um, so you know, it's never really been about money and things like that, or trying to look cool and all the materialistic things. It's just like, you know, I come from humble beginnings, um, so I feel like you know, I just want to be able to share that with a lot of people and and you know, help them out in any way I can. Well, that's awesome, Cyrus, and I know a lot of people are rooting for you. Perry says, "Very cool, Cyrus." We got a lot of comments. That Appreciate you, Perry. Here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are, we're already pulling for you, but I think you're an easy guy to pull for. What, what are your, uh, expectations for, for tomorrow? I mean, are you, are you, uh, hopeful? Are you expecting, you know, six, seventh round to hear your name? I know sometimes guys say it's actually better if you don't go in the seventh round, cause you can pick your team and pick a spot that's better for you. Right. I mean, what, what, what are your expectations? What are you going to be doing tomorrow? Are you going to be having a big party with family and friends or just kind of nervously, you know, pacing or what are you going to be doing? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm thankful for whatever comes. Um, you know, I've, I've heard late rounds to, to, to getting signed. Um, you're right. You know, you did mention that. And that's very real um, about, you know, uh, signing sometimes and you get to pick wherever you want to go and things like that. But, um, you know, the, the good thing is, is, you know, I'm, I have a village behind me, a huge support system. So, you know, if I get drafted to Minnesota or I choose Minnesota, you know, they're going to best believe they're going to be at every game, um, you know, so. Uh, for me, you know, I'm just I'm just kind of laying back low, um, you know, just going to be working out, chilling, you know, watch a movie, hang out, you know, and just kind of wait for for a call. You know, if it's from my agent, if, if it's from a team, um, either way. But, um, you know, and if, if I don't get a call at all, then, hey, I'm back to the drawing board. And, you know, I, I got to come back 10 times harder. And, and you know, just because I don't get any shot, you know, this year or if, if that potentially didn't happen, it's not going to stop me from trying again. So. I'm excited. You know, I'm fortunate uh, wherever I go or whatever happens, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm very thankful.
And are you a guy, I mean, obviously, I mean, we're all expecting this to go well for you tomorrow, but like you said, for some reason it doesn't happen. I mean, are you a guy that's, you know, going to look to the USFL or the XFL or the CFL or other, I mean, are you just want to keep playing football and keep going, going for that shot to get back to the NFL eventually, or is this kind of a, a one shot deal for you? Yeah, no, I'm going to definitely keep trying. Um, you know, um, I've always said it was a blessing to play after high school. Um, it's an even bigger blessing to play after, uh, after college. So if it's, um, you know, XFL, anything like that, Canadian, whatever it is, um, I love the game of football. So, you know, if I get to play and, and the things that come with it and you know, other relationships and all that with meeting new people, then, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Toronto if I have to or whatever I got to do, you know, I'm excited. Uh, but I also, you know, after football, um, I want to I want to go play rugby for Team USA and hopefully go to Olympics. So I, I played rugby my whole life, and um, that's kind of just like another goal for me. Um, you know, it's kind of been something I've always been quiet about, but you know, now that I'm kind of getting to this stage, I kind of it's nice to put it out there and, and manifest it. And, and you know, hopefully, I'd love to do that when when ball is done. So um, that's another thing as well. Well, we we appreciate your time, man. And Jay, I don't know if you had anything else, but uh, I'll, I'll go ahead, Jay. I got, I, got, I got one more for you, Cyrus. Uh, man, you are a one percenter. You know, we mentioned one top one percent coming out of high school, potentially a top one percent coming out of college. You want to be a sports agent, which like one percent of those are, you know, actually survive the gauntlet of being a sports agent. And I'm assuming the odds of becoming an Olympian aren't uh, much better than than being in the top one percent. Um, as you, I mean, some, I mean, some of these obviously being the top, you know, these dreams of yours aren't always super realistic. So as, as kids out there set goals that might be unrealistic, what, what is, what is the thing that, that keeps you going? Like, is there, is there one thing that, that makes you push? And when somebody says, man, Cyrus, the odds of that happening for you just aren't good, man. What's, what, what's the first thing that, you know, pops into your mind that says, you know, that, that pushes you? Yeah, oh, man, there's there's kind of two things. First thing for me, like I said, with my faith, you know, with God, I feel like anything is possible, right? Um, but a main thing for me, um, a kind of more concrete thing that I can kind of hold on to is, uh, you know, my grandparents and my parents, they came here um, from the islands of Tonga. And then uh, on my mom's side, they came from um, Iran. Um, you know, they both came here with nothing, right? Um, and and for me to to be able to grow up and live this lifestyle, um, it's such a blessing just because my grandparents, right, they're immigrants. They come with nothing, um, barely any money, uh, you know, um, had to go through a lot of hoops and obstacles. And, you know, if they, if they can, you know, give me everything with, with nothing, I just feel like, man, you know, there's, there's no excuse for me. Um, you know, if, if my, my grandparents can come here with, you know, less than 200 bucks, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and provide for a family and have five children and have a lot of grandchildren and, and still provide, you know, my grandma still works three jobs um, on my dad's side. So, I'm, you know, that's a big motivation for me. You know, it's like she's still working, um, you know, she still doesn't have much, but she's still giving me everything. Look at this lifestyle I'm living. Right. Um, so I just feel like, hey, if, if if anyone's like, you know, that's impossible, you can't do that. Like you said it's a one percent. Then, hey, I'm a one percenter and, and I'll, whatever's impossible, I'm going to make possible. I mean, any way I can, even if it takes um, a long time. But, but yeah, that's kind of just like my two things for me. Um, and as far as anyone else, you know, if, for kids, you know, if someone tells them that, you know, try to find examples and and um, kind of like what I found. And, and for me, just finding something that really means a lot to me. If you find something that means a lot to you, hold on to it and, you know, and, and run with it and don't ever forget it, you know. Well, man, you're like we said, you're an easy guy to root for, man. We really appreciate your time today. And you're going to get the call tomorrow. You're going to go to a team. It's going to be a great call. Then you're going to get a couple more calls from me and Jay probably. So hopefully you'll uh, hey. still pick up the phone for us if we need to do another quick interview, man. But no, I uh, appreciate you guys. Seriously, congratulations, bro. man. It's going to be a fun day tomorrow for you. Hopefully we're all pulling for you. Bronco Nation's pulling for you. And like Jay said, man, it's uh, – you're, you're uh, hopefully destined to do some big things here, man. It's been fun to get to know you for a year, and it's crazy. It was only a year, man, looking at the stats and stuff. I think Boise State fans wish they could have had you for a couple more years in Boise, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hey, man, it's only been a year, but, you know, many more years to come. I appreciate you guys. Seriously. We'll, we'll talk soon, man. Appreciate it, Cyrus. All right. Thank you. There he is, Cyrus, Habibi, Likio, and Jay. Uh, easy guy to root for like we talked about, and we appreciate his time. And uh, I think uh, I hopefully things go well for him tomorrow. I mean, I'm not sure about I'm not sure about getting drafted. I mean, you didn't even have a single running back go in the first round. I mean, I think he has the tools, but but uh, maybe it's a better option for him to get to pick his spot there if he doesn't get drafted at the end. 
Yeah, and we, I mean, we, I, I learned that in my initial dra- initial draft covering Boy State with a guy like Kellen Moore. You know, um, he goes undrafted. He he gets connected to an offensive coordinator in in Detroit at the time that absolutely loved him. Uh, by doing so, you know, Kellen landed on the fifty three man roster enough to earn NFL pension. And then, oh, that same guy brought him to Dallas, and now he's the offensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys. So, I mean, um, it, it really can work out for you. Look at Brett Rippon with the Broncos. They absolutely love Brett. He went undrafted. Um, there are a number of stories like that, so it's not always the worst thing in the world if you, if you do look go undrafted. I know everybody wants to hear their name called. I absolutely get that. Um, but there is a way to survive and, and make things right, if, even if it doesn't. Well, uh, before we wrap this up real quickly, I do want to mention some of the other guys, Jay, but yeah. uh, quickly first, playtimberstone.com. The weather is great. Uh, if you get out there, it's wet, starting to warm up a little bit. Beautiful day today. You can go online, make your tea time, playtimberstone.com. They got the best greens in the Valley. Uh, awesome golf course was out there playing last week and just uh, Kelly Christensen, Ted Holloway do a great job out there. So if you're looking for a, a course to get out and play, affordable rates, beautiful scenery, play Timberstone. Dot com blue and orange store.com as well check them out online if you're not in the treasure valley they got the daily deals the flash sales all that good stuff if you're in boise go to the boise town square mall the blue and orange store right next to pro image all the great boise state gear nike all that cool stuff so we appreciate the blue and orange store ridley's family markets as well shop ridleys.com 13 idaho locations that they got the at home shopping the skip app the home delivery, all that great stuff. Check them out. And we definitely got to mention Matt Bauscher, Bauscher Real Estate, uh, the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. Uh, his logo was on that uh, graphic when uh, the commitment was made by uh, Chibuzo Agbo, and he has signed to an NIL deal, from my understanding, uh, Chibuzo Agbo. So you'll be seeing him out there representing Bauscher Real Estate in some social media and stuff like that. So check him out, BauscherRealEstate.com, the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. And uh, yeah, that's a whole new wave now where guys are committing with uh, things. And we saw the other guy, Jay, from Miami coming out saying, if I don't get more NIL deals, I'm gone. Uh, it's going to be crazy yeah. to see what happens here. But uh, shouts to Matt Bauscher for stepping up and and uh, making that happen with uh, with with uh, Mr. Agbo. You know, the crazy thing about it, and we'll just touch on this quickly, BJ, we can dive in more maybe another day. But you, you bring up that Miami example of, of basically creating an open market and demanding. A, it's kind of funny that his agent puts that out there, his NL, NIL agent puts that out there, because that's his job to go out and get those deals. <laughs> so to complain publicly just seems kind of weird to me. Anyways, um, you know, I, that's just an example of what we're seeing. I can't imagine what we're not seeing, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I pretty good authority. There are schools in the mountain West that are offering a, a pretty penny to try to get prospects to come to their school. And, um, I don't know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but then you have to worry, the thing you have to consider too, is, is, you know, the, the guy that from Kansas state, the transfer to Miami, he's the one that really rocked the boat yep, in 800 K over two years. And all of a sudden you have these other stars that are already at Miami being like, wait, we took, oh, we went to the elite eight money? last year. We went to the elite eight last yeah, year. Right? You're giving so, him 800 then I want a million. Yeah. There's no way there, are, there will be some teams that, that will handle this beautifully, but there will also be some teams that self-destruct because of this. And I don't know how you can't at least acknowledge what's going on at Miami right now. By the way, Jay, I know we had our hour long, you know, pre-show meeting at 7 a.m. this morning. Yeah. You're ready for the show, but uh, we, uh, I, I'll take some props for having the uh, tweet. I was, yeah, man. I was, I was literally finishing it up, so that's why I was about five seconds late putting it on the screen. I was saving it. I was going to ask the question mm-hmm. myself, so that's another cool angle to, to Cyrus, and I saw that the other day as well. So appreciate him coming on. Great stuff, and definitely looking forward to and, and you know him tomorrow and what happens. And he's kind of in this mix with a lot of guys, yeah. Jay, where. Uh, we just don't quite know if they're going to get drafted. I think if we had to go over under, you know, I think you put it at, uh, you know, one with Khalil Shakir. I don't think we're very confident. Maybe one of those guys can presses and is a seventh round pick, but and it's nothing against those guys. It's just so hard, yeah. as you said, to get drafted. There's what, 250, you know, some odd spots that are out, you know, for thousands of players around the country. Yeah. But you got Cyrus, you got Octavius Evans, you got, uh, you know, uh, Kekala Kaniho, Jake Stetz, Uzo. The two specialists, Joel Velasquez and Danny Cantrell. Uh, what's just your quick thoughts on those guys, and who do you think might uh, end up in a camp or, or get signed? It, it would just surprise me. I, I, Daniel Cantrell is a long snapper. He was great at Boise State. It, it would surprise me if, if he doesn't get an opportunity in some way, shape, or form. You look at Kay Calicanijo, yes, he's a little bit undersized, but his his the complete package that he offers probably at least gets him in a door somewhere, I would assume. 
Um, I'd say the same thing about Jake's stats. I mean, the versatility, he played all over the offensive line. He dealt with an injury. He had to miss the bowl game that didn't actually get played. Um, he did miss the San Diego State game too, I guess. But uh, from what I understand, man, that dude is rocking. He's healthy. Uh, he's been building a lot of momentum. So just kind of keep an eye on on those guys, I would say. And I'd be surprised if if they don't get at least some type of opportunity. Yeah, and thankfully this year they've got kind of the rookie mini camps back. Those were gone yes. for a couple of years due to uh, COVID. Yep. So a lot of guys that maybe at least get a tryout for a weekend and can say they signed with a team and, and have their name next to an NFL logo, even if it's for a mm-hmm. couple of days and get out there on a practice field. Uh, sometimes that's a lot of a lot of times it's all guys get, and they didn't yep. get that opportunity the last couple of years. Maybe a guy can impress during a tryout. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, I think Octavius Evans gets somewhere. I, I think he's a guy that he's got enough film and I'll tell you what, when we were watching pro day, I see him out there working out with Khalil and I thought he belonged, man. He mm-hmm. belonged in the same workout as Khalil Shakir. He looks his part. He's got the physical size. I know he doesn't have the stats because of the injuries and taking some time away for personal stuff. But you look at that guy physically when he's not wearing a shirt, man, and you just look at how in shape he is and, and some of the physical attributes and tools he has, it would not shock me one bit if Octavius Evans can work his way into something with an NFL career. We'll have to, we'll have to clip that. If you, if you look at that guy when he's not wearing a shirt, yep. My wife's probably watching this. So <laughs> right, so. Yeah. Uh, hey, one more I just want to throw out there, too, as long as we're talking about these guys. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy at Boise State's Pro Day maybe help himself as much as Uzo Osuji did. Um, the 40 time that he ran really opened up a lot of eyes and his arms. I mean, he's got left tackle arm length. He's got long arms and he still put up 26 on the bench press. Uh, very impressive strength. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know if anybody's probably I, prior to pro day. I was like, I don't think Uzo gets a shot. And I mean, if I'm being honest um, and I, and what do I know? I don't, I mean, I'm not an NFL scout. I don't know NFL GM. So I might not know, I might not, not know anything, but um, I think that, he really helped himself out of pro day. So it'll be interesting to see if it's enough for, for someone to, uh, to call him and say, Hey man, let's, let's give it a go. Well, we expect Khalil Shakir hopefully to go tonight in round three. And then uh, we'll be waiting tomorrow afternoon for, for word on some of those guys. Uh, Rudy saying, uh, we're talking NIL. If I don't raise Tuss pay, he's moving to Fox sports Boise. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize Rudy was working for you behind the scenes, but uh, did I? <laughs> yeah, let's sell a few more foursomes for this golf tournament. We'll see what we can do in terms of uh, giving Jay a raise, but uh, appreciate everybody for checking it out. Appreciate Cyrus for joining us. Jay, appreciate you as well. And uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, for Boise state fans, it's good news tonight for Khalil. And then uh, hopefully it's uh, good news tomorrow for some of those guys. And then uh, maybe we'll try next week to uh, catch up with one of the guys that signed on Tuesday or something. So uh, appreciate it, Jay. Have a great rest of your uh, Friday, your weekend. I'm sure I'll see you here shortly at uh, Coach Rice down there talking about uh, Chibuzo Agbo. And and uh, another another Friday is underway, man. Yeah, I just want to say Chibuzo Agbo because that's a fun name to say. And I'm going to leave it like that. We'll see yes. you in a little bit, buddy. Have a good Sada, weekend. Sada and Ganja. Well, I mean, they're starting to add – get the market on these guys with uh, tough names to pronounce. So good luck. to <laughs> All I got to do is write them for the most part. Good luck to you, man. But uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see you soon. Bronco nation news live Bronco nation news.com. Thank you folks. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bronco nation news, Bronco nation news.com.